Hey, product launchers. Welcome to another Office Hours expert interview. And today we have Jimmy Tran of World Craft Logistics. And we're going to define logistics in a moment because I'm sure you're going to need that. But I want to introduce you to Jimmy. I met him at a meetup for Amazon sellers. And um, I've just really enjoyed it. I've referred him to a few clients and really enjoyed the way that he works, which is why he's on this platform. Because we want people who really know how to service, know how to answer questions because you have a lot of questions. And if you get prepared ahead of time, if you know this information or if you get the information, you have someone you can trust to go to and get it, then it makes your your flow, your process, your launching faster, easier, safer, and more likely to be successful. So that's why Jimmy is here. So thanks for joining us, Jimmy. Hello. Thank, thank you for having me here. And then um, I just want to uh, say that earlier you point out something that uh, you want to work with a fake forwarder that answer detailed questions. So uh, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very detailed. I even make videos if they need me to. So <laughs> yes, you do. And I've seen your emails. So I know exactly how detailed you are, which is why I, which is why I enjoy working with you. So Jimmy, tell me how a little bit about you and your company. So my, my company, uh, I, I've been doing this for 10 years, right? But uh, I started my company um, about uh, five years ago. Uh, just like any Amazon seller, we started our bedroom. So I started out in my bedroom, and right now we are at a 78,000 square foot warehouse. So we wow. grew from, uh, from a bedroom <laughs> to, um, you know, 78,000 uh, 78, square foot, and we're going to continue to grow because, you know, there's a lot of referrals because in the freight forwarding industry is mainly referrals. Right. And so uh, we do a good job with you and your client. That's why I'm here. And, yep. uh, you know, like, so, so I've been just been learning from you guys as well. Amazon seller are great marketing people. They are. They're great at marketing, but the logistics side, and let's define because you're more than just um, freight forwarding. There's like a lot more to it. So what, yes. what's, what's logistics? What does that mean? Okay. Logistic is basically yeah, when you pick a freight forwarder, right? You don't just I'll tell you right now, any fate forwarder could move the cargo for you, okay? Any fate forwarder could just get your package from the factory to Amazon, but you need to find a fate forwarder that's going to uh, cater to you, right? So what we do is uh, I answer very detailed questions, you know that. I make videos so that people could follow the instruction and maybe share this video with their factory. Uh, recently, we make a video how to uh, do uh, packaging labels. Right, and we're gonna start making video on how many pieces should be in a box. Like 150 pieces, you can't go over more than that. You can't go over more than 50 pounds. Things like that, right? So, like that's just great information right there because you know a lot of your decisions that you're making early on in the product design process is like, well, how many should I put in a case? And you're like, well, how many will fit? But yes. to know that there's a limit, if you pack too many, and then all of a sudden you find out, oh, there was a limit and you already packed it all and then called a freight forwarder, you're gonna yes. be in trouble when it gets to the Amazon warehouse. Yes. So. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make video and we're gonna uh, um, put Chinese subtitle into it so you can share this with your factory. So like for it. example, if you were to work with uh, uh, a factory that never done Amazon shipment before and you say, hey, you don't know how to do it, uh, you know, like th this language barrier between you and the factory, English speaking, Chinese speaking, but here's a video and he's like, oh, okay, thanks for the great instruction. We can do this, yeah. <laughs> yes. so, so pretty much, the, and they will show this to their uh, 50, 100 staff in Chinese and then everybody's on the same page. There's no uh, English barrier between you and the factory and then the manager to the production manager to the staff. This is just a video, right? So that's Love what I'm that. trying to do. So what we do here is we do, um, we, um, we do the fake forwarding. Uh, once it gets here to, uh, we do the custom clearance as well. So that's a normal typical fake forwarder. But once it gets to our warehouse, what we do differently from the rest of the fake forwarder is that other fake forwarder would just move your cargo to Amazon, not very detailed, or just move it to a warehouse because traditional fake forwarder work with traditional company. We move away from the traditional style because we know that Amazon seller, you got to depend on Amazon to sell your product. So you depend on us as a fake forwarder as a checkpoint. So once your cargo hit our warehouse in China, we also 
check on it lightly to make sure that it have made in China to clear custom in the U.S. So there's going to be no problems and it's going to, because that hangs people up because the communication back can be very bad. So you don't know why it's held up. Yes, that's right. And then once it hit our warehouse here in the U.S., we also open up your shipment uh, only if you ask. Like, for example, if you were to sell frigid spinner, that's a good example, right? I can't give other examples. Let's just say you sell a giant frigid spinner, right? So uh, we're going to open it up and we're going to make sure that it have the FNSKU. It's going to meet Amazon requirement. And then it, if it's use a plastic bag, it have suffocation warning. Pretty much we are your final checkpoint before it gets to Amazon. We, took, we take a picture of your product and then we email it to you and you say, hey, this is your product um, that we did the final check for you. Here's the photo. Is it good enough? And if the customer says it's good enough, then we send to Amazon. If it's not good enough, then we, we go further. Like you say, hey, I need you to fix it. I need, uh, I need you to put in... Um, um, pamphlet, I guess. Some people put in um, uh, um, coupon code or whatever they need to put in, or some people, um, you know, buy product in the U.S. and they merge it, like, made in the U.S. Merge the, the US things, merge yep. It together. But it, some people market it that way because um, now your product could be made in the U.S., right? So we, we do a lot of things here, and then um, if your cargo um, go to Amazon, and then labeling is, is wrong like this the fsku is wrong it happens yeah yes it happened that happened a lot and we take care of that for you too you ship the cargo back to us and we do the relabeling so, otherwise the mess is your freight forwarder delivers it to you you have to do all of it then you have to get it back out it's yes. yeah it's a nightmare and a lot of time lost and you're cutting that off by taking care of that for people Yes, that's right. And then also uh, our storage, that how we work here is that we want to make sure that all our Amazon uh, seller survive for Q4. So other- <laughs> <laughs> I like that, survive for Q4. Survive for Q4, right? <laughs> so, you know, um, a lot of the Amazon seller complain that their factory tried to compete with them during Q4. But the thing is that the factory, what, what they don't know is that as- Amazon seller are as American, we are the best marketing country in the world. So believe that you are the best, right? And then unlike the factory, the factory just ship their cargo straight to Amazon and lower the price. But during Q4, when each pallet that Amazon store for you is $200 per pallet, right? Right. Here, here let's just say if you bring a whole container here, uh, right? Uh, which is um, a whole 40 foot container is about 30 pallets, right? We charge uh, $21 for the first 30 days. And after 30 days, we charge $31 per pallet. So, so I, I'm just going to stop you right there because um, Tom and I have not heard of pricing like this. Like this is one, it, when we know we have a client who's like, sometimes just the manufacturing process or the timing, some runs that we have to do with certain factories have to be done when they're making that run of a certain material or a certain thing. And, and that means you have to hold on to inventory. So whenever we hear a client like that, we're like, oh, you got to go to Jimmy because we know that it's going to have to sit for a while till it gets to Q4, till it gets to the timing on which yes, they can right. actually sell it. And that is, you have one of the best pricings that help people hold out. Yes. So, I mean, like, a, like, a, like I said, like a 40 foot container, 30 pallets, you store it at Amazon. It costs you $6,000, right? A month. Uh, you store a 40 foot container, 30 pallets here, time 30, that's $900. Do you want to pay $900 or you want to pay $6,000 in storage? Right. Right. <laughs> right? I mean, th this is where it, it kills people in Q4. And a lot of people, yeah. uh, Q4 is great. I mean, uh, you know, retail for, for retail um, in Q4, it, it's pretty much, uh, I would say half of their year uh, sales, right? Yeah. So one third of it, right? So it that's should at least it should at least be a third, but for most people, it's it's half. It does it, you know, or you do what you do for the whole rest of the two thirds of the year. You do in that for final, you know. Yes, that's right. So uh, we 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 do quite a bit here. You know, like we pretty much what we do is we we want to work around the client because the thing is that's how you're supposed to build your business, right? I mean, you know, same thing like your service, right? You have to ask the client what they need, and then you build your service around them. 
or else they would just go somewhere else. And, and that's a big difference because you've built your service for this purpose, for what is essentially sometimes low to bigger run, right? So you go from smaller, you go to bigger runs as you get bigger and bigger over time. And yeah. what happens with it is that if you were at a traditional freight forward or someone came out of it, they just adopted their exa- existing services and said, hey, we'll make that available to you Amazon seller or, you know, new inventor. And yes. so it's just more of like, you're going to now have to adapt to their process and their costs and their yes. systems. Well, the, 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 tr- the problem with the tr- traditional fate forwarding is that because I used to work for a traditional fate forwarding company, um, traditional fate forwarding company work with company that just bring in the cargo to their warehouse, right? Like uh, they're going to sell on eBay. They're going to uh, give it they're gonna to They're going to sell one, everywhere. Or whatever. <laughs> But we, what Amazon did was that Amazon destroyed those companies. You know, um, Toys R Us is going out of business. All the company now is struggling against Amazon is because, you know, like when you go to Walmart, right? Let's just say you want to buy the screwdriver, right? It's, it's red, right? But now what happened? You make this pink, yellow, and blue as an option. Well, guess what? I might want a bunch of pink screwdrivers. So, so, so Amazon, what Amazon did was that Amazon allowed people to be creative and have, have choices, right? Yes, that's right. And, uh, we, we have to work around very creative people. Since you were creative, we have to be creative with you. That's right. No, I love it. I love it. So, so, you know, so logistics, it, it involves freight forwarding, customs clearance, there's lots of documentation all along the way of all sorts of things that you have to do. Warehousing, distribution, and perhaps I'm going to call it light assembly or reassembly as you yes, insert right. things and, uh, and do them. Storage. Yes. And, um, you know, and sometimes labeling. So, like, yes. there's, a, there's a lot that it encompasses. Am I missing anything? Uh, yes. Uh, about the importation of the document, right? So, I just want to say that if anyone want to, like, let's just say if you want to import a product, and you have question about the duties or you have question about FDA, anything like that, they are welcome to contact me. It's a hundred percent free. I don't ask for any positive. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Say, hey, so now know? let me remind everybody that you can reach Jimmy through his expert profile. He's got his email and all his company information is right there in his expert profile. So you can reach him right from there. Um, so you don't have to go finding him on the internet. So just go right into your, into uh, the membership area and go to the experts profiles and you'll find Jimmy there and all the details. But you know, this is important because sometimes in the early planning process, when we're deciding whether or not a product should um, is profitable enough to continue and move forward. Like we're making that decision, not yes. knowing what what import category it goes into, what its duty costs are going to be. If we don't run with accurate information and we just run with generalized information, yes, we may turn down a good product. And so we have to have the right information to make that decision. And you offering access to that is very valuable for those planning. Yes. It, it, picking a fit for and picking the right product is like picking the factory. You know, <laughs> yes. like, that's, uh, I feel I feel a lot of um, a lot of Amazon seller also make the mistake with picking the factory, right? Like some, you know how when you go on Alibaba, you you see the factory uh, um, minimum production in a week is like ten thousand unit, right? Or like let, let's just say a, a two hundred units, right? So you they will pick they will work with the lowest price factory, and the pra- factory will produce one hundred unit per week, and they sell hundred units per week. Next month, when you sell 200 units per week, the factory is able to cater 200 units per week. But when you move to 1,000 units per week, the factory can't handle it. So, so when you pick the factory, just like you pick a fake order, you have to say, okay, um, I'm okay to work with your company when it's small. But the thing is, when I expand to be bigger, factory, can you produce this much unit per month? Because I'm planning to be like Walmart. I'm planning to be big, right? I'm planning to be big, right? <laughs> Jimmy, uh, you accept a container now. I want to know two years from now when I'm doing a container every single month, not every five months. Can you handle a con- Can you handle three containers? Can you handle five containers during Q4 for me? So you know you have to interview the fate forwarder for that. 
and the factory as well. You know that you're so right about that. It, it's um, I see. I'm sure that because you touch so many different types of products and different types of factories, you see a different view of them, like Tom and I do, like we do on our end, because yes, yes. the way we go in and work on the development side of things. So we see the sort of engineering and development capabilities and the you know and the early pre-production side of of companies. We don't really see them when they go out the door. You see that part That's of right. the organization, That's right. right? But when you do what you start to realize is that so many um, have bad communication or they just don't have the kind of systems in place that they should. They're kind of like, there's a guy who does it and you call him up and he gets it done, but there's no like system or process in place. And when you start to get bigger, that becomes problematic. Well, scaling is always, uh, you know, an issue for people of uh, money is an issue, right? When you scale, but then also, uh, as any company, when you scale, there's a shortage of staff, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, right? Like, I'm sure you know that. Yeah. As you scale yeah, up a, very I, quickly I mean, in five years. I struggle through that as well. There's a shortage of staff. And then yeah. there's the, the SOP. Like, the, do they have an SOP, right? So Standard so, operating for procedure for those of you who are not in the lingo. And you really should get one if you don't have one. <laughs> yes, that's right. So... So pretty much there is a process and what I try to do here with my company is that I want to make sure I outgrow my client, right? Because ah. with, I, I, with any business, I feel you should pick someone that, like I pick a partner, right? I'm pretty sure uh, every viewer here might have a partner. So my advice is when you pick your partner, you have to pick a partner that outpace you. Yeah, so that they're always a little bit ahead of you. So it, it will push you. Yeah. Right. Because the thing is, like, let's just say you work with me in a 5000 square foot warehouse and then you you decide to do five container uh, next year. You can ask Jimmy, are you going to move out or are you going to stay? If I say, you know what, I'm a slow partner, I'm going to stay. Well, it's too bad. Right. Yeah. So, you want someone who's going to be able to keep up or be ahead of you. And yes. I, I agree. That's so, so, so smart. So, so let's talk a little bit because this is product launch hazards. Let's talk about some of the things you've seen really go wrong for people that, that are, are kind of common that, you know, that you see, you know, one or two things that, that you've seen go wrong again and again, and reasons maybe things don't pass customs or they get in and you have to unbox them all and do some work. Yes. What's gone wrong for people? Okay. So, so, um, number one thing is, uh, made in China that things uh, forgot to label it. Yes. They forgot to label it or, or pretty much a miscommunication with the factory. You tell the factory, don't put any label. And, you know, China is very good about following instruction. Yes, <laughs> to the letter. <laughs> to the letter, right? Like it's so a, so you, we have this, we have this uh, a character, you know, this book here in the U.S., Amelia Bedelia, right? You've heard of Amelia Bedelia before. I don't know if when you were young or whatever, but Amelia Bedelia does this stuff where she follows exactly what it is. And she's like, you know, if you hang the drapes, it means that you like literally put a noose around them and you hang them outside, oh. right? She takes everything <laughs> to the literal sense. And that's the way I always think about that I think about like what is my daughter's gonna say like I said to my daughters the other day I'm gonna jump in the shower you guys sit here and be concerned and, and be you know do your thing and they looked at me and they go mom if you jump you'll slip and I was like, okay, I'm not jumping in the shower. I'm going to step into the shower. <laughs> but it's like you, our words, we have to be careful with that. It's the same thing when you have a translation issue. You have to be careful with the words that you use and make sure that you're, you're being clear in that communication so you get what you want. Yes, that's right. So May in China, but for the May in China, our team in China will always make sure the product half May in China before it leaves. So that's, so that's, that's one thing. Yeah. That. And then in terms of you picking your product, uh, lately I seen there's a surge of people picking product that's FDA. Yes. So the, the thing is the, uh, the product is not okay. So let's, let's talk about FDA product, right? So, uh, when people order small quantity from the factory, they would ship a DHL Air, FedEx, and UPS, right? Yeah. Through the DHL channel, and they would declare it wrong, right? And they would get in, and then the Amazon account start growing, right? It, it starts selling product. But after a while, when they say, okay, well, I want to move big shipment now, and they found out that the factory have no paperwork, and they also have no paperwork, and now they, they spend so much time building this product, and it end up nowhere because you can't, importing legally now right so 
it's always good to review what your fake folder. So, so oh. now why is that? Is that, so you're talking FDA, not FBA, right? No, so FDA. F FDA is Food and Drug Administration, which means yeah. that it's, it's regulated. So like supplements, um, uh, try food products. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that some beauty. Well, products let, let me give you a random example, right? Yeah. So uh, my parents Asian, right? We yep. uh, they like um, like five years ago they were selling. Um, they, they were buying. I'm sorry. They were buying like this uh, this this uh, this this stick made out of like rocks, right? So what you do is you massage your head, and then it's supposed to uh, release stress and stuff like that. Well, the thing is. You, when you import product in, you have to be careful what you put on the packaging. Right. Oh, because what it's regulated and able to do, like making claims. Yes, making claim. You, 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 you pretty much, let's say you import in a rock, right? It's a rock. Well, don't put it on the package making claims saying that it's going to re release stress when you, when you put it next to your bed or you rub it against your body, right? It reduces pain. Don't do that. Health but, and wellness claims are the biggest area, right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. But the thing is like people, people see other people put this product on Amazon, right? And people see them making this claim on Amazon. Well, and they, they always ask me about it. They're like, wait, you telling me I cannot put this stuff on my packaging, but I see this on Amazon all the time, right? So what I tell them is because when they import rocks in, they don't put anything on the rocks. It just rocks, right? But when you put it on Amazon, you could put your listing any way you want. Yeah, the listings are not as regulated. They should be, but they're not. And thank goodness for people who want to sell that stuff. But yes. the box, because when you're saying the difference between air freighting stuff in and how that you do that because you're doing a box at a time or you know a DHL yes. at a time, it has a different set of like, categories and the rules that it goes through than it does when you bring a big container load yes. worth. Like, like pretty much if you were to bring something in by DHL and it doesn't really meet the standard US custom for the air express side, they will let it go. But once you bring something in like uh, over a thousand pieces by air freight or ocean freight, what happened is that now the custom officer are going to question and say, well, this thing is going to go into regulation. Like, like right. we did among the people, a thousand pieces going to be, you know, being out there. So no, this cannot go out, but. So yeah. So you have to pay attention to what I'm going to call warning labels, compliance yeah. claims, right? So they kind of all fall into there. And you know, you were mentioning suffocation warnings earlier about that on yes. the packaging. And most, I, I found that most factories, it's kind of automatically in the bags that they use because they know everybody needs it, but you should check. And if it's not in your specifications, you better make sure that it is. Yes, that's right. I mean, uh, you, you, I would say you can't trust the factory. Yeah, it's on you. It's always on you. That's our rules. It's, it's on you. If you didn't specify it, if you didn't, you know, put it in your quotation, if you didn't add all these things in, if you didn't check it before it came in, you know, getting a sample that's completed in your box with your stuff, then you have problems. Yes. I mean, uh, another, another thing is w we have to compare ourselves to a big company, right? So even big company like Johnson Johnson or uh, uh, Victoria's Secret, when they met, um, make production overseas, guess what? There's quality control for every batch. Yeah. Even company that exists for that long do that much quality control. You being a small company working with a small factory, you have to do quality check every shipment. Right. So yeah. or, or else you just go out of business. I mean, even Johnson Johnson have uh, prof problems where they have to, uh, you know, pull everything back. They do. All right. They do. And, and this is the thing is that what we think that, oh, we're so small that it's not going to matter, you know, that it's not going to be a big deal, whatever. But the reality is, is that when somebody comes in and there is a problem and you, everything gets recalled or something happens like that, it's not just on you because Amazon is going to push all that onto you. It's going to be your problem, but the factory is not going to be held liable for that. It's on you and you will have paid for inventory that you can't move, maybe can't correct because you didn't do a, a cursory check. But more importantly, if it's egregious enough, meaning if it's a bad enough violation of some safety rule or a compliance rule, you can be held liable because you didn't make a, a concerted effort to track it, document it, follow it, 
do any of those things. So those things matter that you, you have a process and a system or a partner who can help say, illuminate what you don't know, right? <laughs> yes. And then when it go wrong, of course, we fix, we end up be the one fixing it for you. <laughs> there you go. So you're like, Mr. Fix it for us. <laughs> That's wonderful too. So, so now on the other side of things, let's talk about the positive instead of the hazards, <laughs> the problems. Let's talk about some of the positive things. So, you know, really the streamlined way that you work is in and of itself a, a positive for early business because it means that I don't have to think or early product launch, right? So even yeah. if I'm in a business that has tons of products already for sale, bringing in a new product, I've got lots to worry about to keep stuff selling. I don't have time to worry about how everything's happening and what's happening. You cut, you'll, you're willing to do it sort of, I'm going to call it blind to me, meaning I can get an email once a week if I want. I don't have to see every little conversation if I don't want to. If I want to, I can. Yes. So, so pretty much we, 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 like you say, you know, we, we streamline everything for you. We want to make sure like, like there's a lot of back, back office work, like how we do it, how we do with our clients that after a while, our client would just tell us, Hey, my product is ready. Please contact the factory. And we would reach out to the factory. We would collect the data and we would get all the information and we give our client the, uh, the rates. If the, the client accept, then we just contact the factory again. And then now the client doesn't have to stay up late at night, you know, and deal with the factory and stuff because we collect all the data for you and we just reach out to the factory and we say, Hey, we're here to collect the shipment and it's ready to move. And then once it's moved and we tell the, the client the schedule, say, here's your schedule. Uh, when's the shipment going to arrive in the U S and then uh, about seven days or three days before it, uh, it gets here, we notify the client again. And then once it touch out, 24 hours before I touch our warehouse, we ask the client, how do you want to get this to Amazon? Do you want to store some? Do you want to UPS some? Or you want to LTL some? So we- Because you know, you know what? This is kind of important, the fact that you, you don't make people decide that at the beginning because you know a lot of companies, it's locked in. That's something that I don't think- Oh, yes, know. that's right. That's, it's that's, locked in and you know, but based on the time of year or when it finally gets through port or- that happens to be a port strike or something like that. And some things happen. And now all of a sudden you're like, I got to have them all sent to Amazon. Like, and so it changes on you and some companies flip out and don't let you make changes. Oh yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. When that, that, that is correct. When, when you work with, I, I do realize that when you, when client work with other fate forwarder, pretty much the other fate forwarder would say, okay, well, this is my process that I quote you. Right. And then that's it. But for that's us, it. you're done. You're stuck. <laughs> You, you said because we built it that way in China already, right? That process, right? So, but for us, we understand that once your cargo gets to our warehouse, um, let's just say if it's ocean freight, right? It's going to take uh, 25 days, right? Within those 25 days, a lot of things could happen. You could do so well, you market so well, and you you sell out a product, right? Or, you know, like, oh, you, you have too much product in, in Amazon. You say, hey, you know what? Don't send to Amazon because right now you send it in, those four pallets are gonna cost me $800 a month. Why don't you just hold it back at your warehouse for 80 bucks a month? Yeah. So it, right? gives, so it gives you a lot of flexibility and I think that's really key. So easy communication, lots of flexibility. Those are some definite positives. And I mean, and willingness to answer questions, which brings me to why you're here on this platform. So let's talk about some things that you might um, discuss in future office hours. Um, I think timing, like when should they get you involved is kind of a great idea for you to do a whole office hours on. So where you do like 10 or 15 minutes talking about what works best for you guys and what you've, what, and what has worked for many Amazon sellers. And then they can just ask you a ton of questions. Um, you, you, you schedule a time to talk with me. And yeah, then... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm here, I'm here for them. <laughs> You're here for them. Right. And so you can get specific. I love that. Um, so, you know, I mean, I just think there's so many things that people have questions about. It's like this big, like you're planning your launch and you're learning how to sell on Amazon or you're already selling on Amazon and you're really concentrated on that. And now you're learning your product and you're getting your product ready and you're doing that. And to make the freight forwarding and all of that logistics side of things an afterthought, can sometimes hurt your profitability. Yes. But it can also really hurt your ability to launch on the timing you expected. Yes. Look, logistic is, um, I, logistic is something you shouldn't learn to do. You just hire someone else. You should just hire 
yes. yeah, you should learn who to call <laughs> yes. um, or email. Like, yes, like for for us, like uh, for a staff to really understand logistic, you, you know, like let's say you work for Walmart, uh, uh, McDonald's, or whatever. Uh, three months is the normal time that you understand how to make a hamburger, let's say, right? But for logistic, it actually take about two years for a person to understand it, and they work eight hour a day yeah. because because every every product is different every client is different and then everybody buy from different location and ship to different location yeah. it's not like um you know like the uh, like uh, a hamburger where this is how you make a hamburger and you either order number one combo to number eight combo and you know like no like every everything every ship is different is yeah. Yes. Oh, so, so, so good. Well, Jimmy, I am so glad you are on the Product Launch Hazards platform and you're in, you have direct access to all of our members and they have access to you. So thank you so much for doing that. And we'll look forward to your next office hours. All right. Thank you so much.